Welcome back to the Zach Nichols podcast. I'm here with my co-host, Mr. Zach Nichols. Chug, 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 chug. Atta boy. Should I smash it on my forehead? Yeah, you should. <laughs> Is that Celsius, the liquid legal cocaine of the future? No. Okay. Uh, welcome back to the Zach Nichols that podcast. Was straight whiskey. Oh, whiskey, whiskey sours. Um, Zach. Welcome back to the show, man. We got we got a week and a half in of of the new baby. She is beautiful. I saw her uh, with my own eyes the other day. Miss Carmela Jean Nichols. Round of applause, please. Yeah, she's good, dude. She is very good. You know what? It's very busy. I'll give. Her, I'll I'll say that. I can see that. There's a lot going on. Texting in the middle of the show. We had some. Oh no, I wasn't texting. I was trying to uh, read my notes on that. Oh, okay. <laughs> but I was like. Talking about like plungers, I think at one point. Yep, there we go. Yeah, it's so funny. All of a sudden, here it just says, "Perry, can you dance?" I am. Can you dance? I am by Let's far actually, the best dancer in, on the show. On this show, you hear me talking shit. I'll give you that. Okay. You wanna know why? Why? I'm the worst dancer in my family, by far. My dad. You can ask Jenna. My dad at my brother's wedding, he sat there and made fun of me to her for like three whole songs and he was like that is my best athlete of all my kids but he can't hear a beat to save his life and you know when i knew i was a bad dancer tell me my sister got married when i was like 24 so i thought i was the man i used to think you know brock and jack and we'd all go out in trent we go to memories in in, <laughs> in brighton and milford yeah nothing special really about memories besides the dance floor and i used to think i had the best dance moves but then my sister's wedding video came in and I literally saw what I looked like. Oh, buddy. <laughs> you give me Travolta vibes. I, you almost know what passed, I, mean? I almost passed out. And now, anytime anybody talks about watching my sister's wedding video, I'll leave the house. Okay. Like, if we're at a family, get, I'm outside. All right. Well, I know you're not going to watch it, but do I have you know permission to go no, find it out there no, and put it out for the world no. to see? There's only one copy ever made. It's at my parents. No, seriously. It's at my... Oh, <laughs> I'm sure her in. I'm gonna have to. Too. I'm gonna have to study the film. Well, by the way, I am terrible. By far the best dancer on this couch. I'm not the most technical. On this couch. <laughs> I'm not. You're the top most, two I'm not, on this couch. I'm not the most technical. That makes me top two. Right. I'm not the most technical, but I give an A for effort. Okay, and I don't care to embarrass myself for the fans. So like, well, I don't care to embarrass myself, but it's that's the only dancing I do. I don't do the I'm seriously dancing. Yeah. You know, there's like the people who dance and in their head they think they look good. That was me until I saw what I looked like. Now I'm the guy that goes on the dance floor and I do everything I can to embarrass myself. Because if I'm embarrassing myself, that way is much better than embarrassing yourself when you think you look good. <laughs> Agree. There's nothing worse than that. It's like having like a booger hanging out of your nose when you think you look good. Terrible. Horrendous. Well, one other thing that happened. You would happened... vomit if you saw me dance. Like, if you need me to puke, if I poison myself and you need me to puke, get that video. T to today, as a 36-year-old man, what occasion is going to get you to dance? Uh, fast dance or slow dance? Fast. <laughs> well, when they play Little John in the club, yeah, no. yeah. So it would, it would yeah. probably take a certain combination of people. Uh, that song came out when I was a sophomore in high school. Such a classic. I know. Freak a leak shortly after that. Anyways, to dance, I don't even. Think, I'm not gonna fast dance ever again. Probably. Okay. Well, we're gonna, we're gonna try to change that. Hopefully, we can get you rocked enough one of these days. Uh, oh, to it do would. That. <laughs> It would take I'm not courage. allowed to do the things that would it would make me like I promised Jenna when we got uh, engaged I wouldn't do certain things that could only make me dance at this age. Okay, all right, well we'll see. I'd hurt myself. One probably. thing that you can do at this age is you can sink a birdie putt on 18 at Ironwood. I did do that. To have a fantastic end of year round that was spectacular. Fantastic day was capped off by probably we sent the film in and. <laughs> PGA and Liv are fighting over me right now. They are. I shot it from the tips. Yeah, no, it was, oh. The tips at Ironwood. <laughs> the tippity tops. The tippity oh, tops. Man. You, that was a par five. Mm -hmm. You really stuck You stuck it from range, sink the birdie putt. How many balls did I lose on Sunday? Um, You know, I wasn't in your cart, but you. <laughs> well, I thought I lost one. I found it in the woods, and then I hit one in the water, but it was so close to the end. That it was sitting right there. So. Yeah, scoop and score. Yeah, I'll take that. Oh, man, no, we had a great time. We were able to do that thanks to the efforts of Jenna, the queen bee. Give a round of applause for Jenna, please. 
as well as Joanne. Yeah, so thank you so much. My mother in law's in town. Appreciate so it. I got away. Yeah. <laughs> we made it happen. Snuck out. Um, yeah. So speaking of dancers, uh, <laughs> Battle for a New Champion season 39. Um, this is the part two of the reunion. This is the last time we'll see this collection of people together. For better or worse. <laughs> um, but it's been a, a fun t- fun time uh, taking you know, note of everything they got going on. And we'll get back into it. So uh, it starts off by bringing Kylan and, and Asaf kind of... They're back in the mix with the shut the fuck ups. <laughs> you know, Kylan goes... Yeah, we all know nothing's going to happen. Yeah, no, nah, y'all, y'all on that talk talk. But he says... Kylan's him, not going to fight anybody in that turtleneck. No, no absolutely not. He's going to talk it out. He's definitely going to talk it out. When you look... But, yeah, no, for sure. But is that the first swear word you've ever heard out of Kylan? I'll be honest with you, I was surprised by that behavior, but you know what? I think he kind of like, I think he just like let his hair down Yeah, and just went for it. You know, he's like, I'm on the challenge. I'm not on Big Brother anymore. This guy's an idiot Yeah, and I'm sick of it, Yeah, you know? And I well, think every now and then you can't always be the nice guy. No, for sure. And I think also, that's a great point. I think also like for him, he's getting a little bit of respect around, you know, challenge conversations. No, so he, look, for him to get loud and charge, you know what I'm saying? It's not, so, it helps his profile. Kylan, by some challenge formula, has beaten me in an elimination round. <laughs> okay, tell he me be- the transitive property of how he beat you, please. <laughs> so he beat Durrell, okay. and I lost to Durrell. Okay, that's true. So Kylan's better than you at elimination. Is that what you're saying? Well, <laughs> I know that means ASAP's fucked. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Oh, man. Do you think guy. like he was, ASAP was a little bit worn out by the end of this episode? Like, I, I feel like he came into the season in this reunion thinking one thing about himself, but I think he, like, slowly is starting to realize, like, these people don't respect me. In fact, like, I'm a laughing stock. <laughs> yeah. You know, the producers crazy? don't respect he, you. Listen, he, he, like, what was so shocking to me was, like, he was getting into it with Darrell, and I'm like, yeah, act tough with Darrell. See how that goes. Yeah. That's Brad how that goes. Yeah. Ask, uh, you know, yourself. Do you know what I'm everyone. talking about? No, I don't. What? It was a scrap? You gotta Are see you Michael's. Me? Michael's freaking out behind the scenes. Michael, by the way, doing his first job here. He's a cha- he. What, what what happened with Brad and and, and Darrell? okay? So on the ruins, Darrell had a a cakewalk to the final. Like he didn't have he are so he went in early on and said I'm gonna go into this elimination round, but that yeah. means I'm not going to the last one, which means Darrell had a free walk to a team final where everyone is gonna win money and they're on a team. Let's just talk about this team. It was Darrell, Brad, Johnny, Evan. Kenny and Derek Kaczynski and Susie, who is also a badass. It that's who was there. They were gonna go to a final against Kellyanne. No, was it Kellyanne? It was Kellyanne and Sarah. Yeah, that's who they were going against. Darrell had a literally a cakewalk to like a easy eighty k check. They get drinking. Brad's got to go into the elimination, so you know Brad's feeling the heat. Yeah. Brad. He's reckless. Yeah, Brad gets a little bit of the sauce in him, and he starts talking, and he's basically telling Darrell, like, I will work you. And Darrell, it looked like it had been going on for a while, and I think finally he, like, you can only tell someone from Oakland, California, you're going to wreck them so many times before they're like, okay, then do it. And they went at each other, and Darrell hit him with a pop, pop, and yeah. bounced his head off the floor, and they both got kicked out of the game. But Brad, Brad left. I mean, I don't think he could open either one of his eyes. Like Darrell got him good. Like Dar- Darrell has hands. Oh, for so real. When I'm watching Asaph say this, I'm like, Darrell will literally. He dropped Brad instantaneously. Three shots before Brad even knew what happened. And I wouldn't fight Brad either. <laughs> no, de- definitely not today, and definitely not ten years ago, twenty years ago. Right. <laughs> definitely not. Darrell, Darrell threw hands so quick. You didn't even see the punches, and it was insane. So, Asaph, have fun with that. Yeah, no, that's what. Okay, what's the most heated you've seen things get on a reunion? Oh, I've seen Devin stand directly over Johnny, and uh, like he was going to hit him. Yeah. I've seen it. Le- like, legitimately, heated. yeah. yeah. yeah like that was a pretty, that was intense after Vendetta's. Or no, it was Vendetta's and then Final Reckoning. Devin's someone you don't, at a reunion... You don't want to be on his bad side. Yeah, no, he goes he, hard. He know he knows how to push buttons. Devin goes hard at reunion. Yeah, no, and I loved him in this one. So, uh, yeah, Darrell, uh, I I don't write shit online, bro. Keep me out your mouth. I'm fucking tired of it. Uh, you're soft, thirsty, and corny. <laughs> so yeah, and then Asaf game even harder at him, and I'm thinking, dude, don't push him. Yeah, chill. Um, so uh, they then moved <laughs> to the James decision. 
uh, to choose Norris over Zara. Um, Zara immediately calls him out. What was that? You haven't apologized for six months. So then James, he goes, um, it was one of the few times I should have actually gone, you know, uh, not with what people want. Uh, I lost my integrity um, and he didn't message her because he was embarrassed. He apologized um, and she forgave him. To be fair. And then, and then he said, to be fair, I was being a little bit of a bitch in this show. So what did you think about him taking accountability there? Do I love when people take accountability. Yeah. I think it's great because here's the thing. As soon as you take accountability, you notice how it moves everything along. It's when you're not willing to own up to your shit at reunions is when everyone's going to come and attack you. Just own up to it. He was, but he said it all season. He's like, I'm just doing whatever I got to do to stay safe. Yeah. He doesn't care about Zara. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. He doesn't. Like they act like they're such best friends. And as soon as, you know, Mariah comes around, he's like, wait, what was that? Who? Yeah. <laughs> wait, what? Yeah. He's like, I've known Narice for years. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. Uh, I was just started. We just met the other day. No, I've known you for years. Yeah. Uh, he basically said, like, look, I, I was getting some of the best ass I've ever got in my life. Is that what he said? And no, I'm just kidding. I was like, oh, my gosh, you probably, what'd you get the unedited version? I got the subtext. But this is what he was telling her. He's like, look, Zara, like, I'm getting some ass. Like, she just so happens to be aligned with the other side that has the power, and you're on the short end of the stick here. So it is what it is. I don't know. I thought it was funny. Um, they go back to the Corey deliberation. We've talked about that a lot, but is there anything you want to add before we move on from that? What do we talk about? Just Corey and, um, you know, the... The whole big T. No, I like to see that the resolution they had. Yes. Um, I felt really bad for him last episode because I thought that those girls were being, they were, they just were so in love with the attention they were getting from being victims. I thought they were just kind of dragging it on when he, you can tell when someone's truly sorry and he apologized a million times, but I like to see the resolution and now I'm happy with uh, big T and Melissa again. Although I do look at big T must much differently now. And now that I know she's a, she farts like a sailor. <laughs> Like, that's disgusting. Like, Vile. Yeah, no, like, any girl, as soon as she's like, I rip ass all the time and it's nasty, I'm like, yo, dog, I'm out, dog. <laughs> this is good for not, me, dog. Here's the, not even, it's a like, no for me, bro. Yeah, like, that's the, I've, to be honest with you, I'm going to be 100% honest. I have never heard Jenna fart once. And she's probably lives with a constant stomach ache because I don't know how that's possible. Well, but I, I've never, I mean, that's honestly got hand on the Bible. I've never heard her fart. I was going to say this. I was going to say, look, if you guys all live together, all you have to FDDs, share these, yeah. baby. No, I'm just kidding. No, I'm just kidding. I live with that. Yeah. No, look, if you, <laughs> if you live together with somebody and they go to the bathroom to fart, that's like fair game. You know, like where else are you going to fart if you can't fart in the bathroom? But just to be like out in the open I in the house. There, I think there should be like, you know, how there's like smoking rooms in airports. <laughs> I think there should be like private rooms for like all the girls to go fart in so they don't have to like degrade themselves like that. <laughs> I mean, yeah, but no, no cameras. But Emmanuel will find a way to bang someone in there for sure. Oh yeah, Emmanuel will will, will literally will probably sit. He'll connect like a hole to the room with like yeah. a tube, and he'll be like, <gasps> he'll like <gasps> puff in the girl's farts. <laughs> he'll be nine by. Uh, he'll be non-binary for the day. Go be a chick for that day. Yeah. Go in there, and then walk right out. I'm a dude now. I'm a dude now. No, he would just be huffing the chick's farts out of the room. He's the they call him HVAC. He's purifying the air in there. <laughs> It's fucking great. Mustache, dude. What a true. Oh, Do you man. see his platform shoes? Oh, my God. I, I... His, his platform, Doc Martens. <laughs> no. All right. You want to take a roundhouse kick to the face from Emmanuel in his platform, Doc oh, Martens? Oh, yeah. In his fucking, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll know his choreography because it'll all be Michael Jackson moves. Um, listen, That's where he got that jacket. Is that, that a Michael Jackson jacket? That, that we, we clowned about that in the last clip, but 100% some MJ jacket. Um, then Wait. they. they you know what's grosser than Big T's farts? What? Go back and listen to the joke Devin told. It was the it was the joke that or no, Kara told the joke. Um, what was it? What was it? It was, dude, it was terrible. Oh, Devin goes to pull the thing right, and Kara yeah. says, "Devin, your pullout game is strong." Listen to Maria Menounos laugh. It's the most creepy, disgusting. Like I had to re- I had to go back fifteen times. You know the back button. It's like go yeah. back fifteen seconds. I literally would watch it, and I was like. Oh my gosh! Watch again. I'm she's like, like <laughs> it's hard. It's still hard. yeah. She's like, jeez. <laughs> Speaking of that, jeez, Maria. Jeez, Maria. Put your Adam's apple away for a second. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> Dude, what are you short on <laughs> air? No, no, no. You breathe you breathing out of the girl's fart room or something? Come on, man. Get your shit together. <laughs> Who knew knows is getting strays right now? Well, maybe, maybe it's because we're ready to publicly manifest, you know, what everyone's gonna be talking about. They want us to host the reunion. What 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 would you uh what would you say to that if they if they called for us to host the reunion? I would love to host the reunion. I would love for us to host but the reunion. But I would reunion only too. do it if you could somehow get me Emmanuel's jacket. <laughs> That's easy, bro. And a sailor hat. That's easy. If 250 makes him a millionaire. And an, oh, yeah. And an eye patch and a sailor hat. Dude, did you see, though, um, when what? he won that 20, 25 hundo at the oh, end? Oh, yeah. That's a mill. Yeah. Doesn't even care anymore, bro. I am, that's a, I am also a Romanian millionaire. Yeah. And no. I wouldn't toss 20, 25 hundo around like that. By his, by his exact standards, that's 10 grand that he just, no, more than that. That's 25,000. Cause hey, a quarter point, you know. <laughs> Easy, dude. Come on. <laughs> Whatever it is, my math is fucked up. Okay, so they show Berna, which we'll definitely get to her. Bro, escapade. how crazy is Berna? Berna is. Everyone to go after, she goes after Colleen because Colleen doesn't answer her phone calls in real life. That's what Berna's big issue is. It's not with Michelle, who basically used her all season. It's not with anybody else. Her issue is with Colleen, who's probably a CIA asset, let's be honest. Like, she has, she didn't give a rat's ass. She's like, I didn't answer because I don't care. Yeah, I'm very busy. Berna's, alive. Berna's issue is with Colleen. She is batshit crazy. That was, that was the mental institute that she was filming from. They brought her into, like, the main office. And they're like, hey, we need you to film a quick. <laughs> Who are you mad at? On, yeah. She's probably like, I don't even know what they're talking about. They had to, they had to just show her cast pictures, and she's like, that one. She, she well, doesn't answer my phone calls and Colleen's like, I'm a busy person. Yeah. <laughs> I don't care about you. <laughs> Since we are talking about Brenda, let's skip around. All right. To what I thought was very oh, revealing. Oh, they're sucking up, man. <laughs> they're trying to say they're making out. How so, about though? She's so crazy. She told everyone. Yeah. She, she told her, she's like, I've been cut on with them all season. And he picks me. It's like actually happening. So in the during the daytime, she's telling Colleen he has a he has a girlfriend. You're fucking on him. He tells he tries to cock block fucking Raven. He tries to cock block Olivia, whatever. And she's the one. That's she's why the one slobbing the knob. That's why she was. That's why she was doing that, bro. She was the this, Ben Wallace of cock blocking. <laughs> what a dude. In the, on the that's side. That's hysterical. Dude. She was getting it in on the side. Yeah, she's a savage. Making everyone else feel guilty about hooking up with Emmanuel, and she was she was the main piece. <laughs> yeah. oh, that's Emmanuel's like that. Great, that's man. literally like that scene from uh, Wedding Crashers where he finds out she's not a virgin. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Emmanuel the whole time, you know, like everyone thinks Bern is this like whatever girl, and the whole time she's just been the girl from Wedding Crashers. <laughs> just like thought that's what guys wanted to hear. Yeah, I just thought that's what guys wanted to hear. Manuel was walking. Oh, man. She was walking around with panties shoved in her mouth all season. We had no idea. Yeah. <laughs> so now that we know that, now that we know that, it makes her even crazier. It makes her even crazier, and it makes this win look even worse for the Emmanuel. fact that they didn't bring her to the reunion. Also, is like a, it's like a you know red flag. We yeah. know why she's not there. Yeah, well, she's a liability. Was that room? Did you see the pads on the wall in that room? She was sitting in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> she they she never brought her hands up. That's because they were cuffed. <laughs> Her feet were also handcuffed together too. That's why she was like bobbing around like that. We get, we see you. We see, we see in, what's going on. She's in Romanian prison in Emmanuel's basement. Oh, uh, that's great. So, what a uh, creep, dude. Laura, big time. So, Laurel has asked a question via Dev Devin pulling the chaos, uh, which says, which challenger needs to work on their game um, to be a champion? And she smartly says, everyone, because literally none of them. You know, have every experience, but uh, how would you have answered that question if you had looked at the cast that was out of that reunion and they said, Zach, who, you know, needs to work on being a champion and what could they do to be a champion? I feel like everybody that didn't win needs to work on being a champion. <laughs> exactly what she said. Yeah, that's the politically correct answer while also shaming everybody else on the stage. Fair enough. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, they all need, everyone that didn't win could work on it. I could work on it, you know? Mm -hmm. It's not like every time, and here's the other thing, it's not like every time someone shows up, they're going to win. Mm -hmm. So uh, Tori um, said that uh, you know Laurel Laurel was the goat and so did Kara, so which is was, huge. Yeah, that was, that was so like that's so when I sit here and I tell people I'm afraid of Laurel, everyone's afraid of Laurel, and it's not a fear. I guess it's more of a as a competitor, she is the most dominant female, and the only person that's even close to her, in my opinion, would be like an Emily Schramm. 
mm-hmm. because she was just a physically dominant presence too. But they never did a season together. Mm-hmm. That's interesting. Know? Um, so, so yeah, so yeah, so just something huge. to know. That can't wait for you guys huge. to hear that Laurel interview is coming in a couple weeks. So stay tuned for that. I do want to see though. I can't wait to see. Uh, you know, now that it's pretty much set up, we get to see, like Laurel's kind of Laurel benefits from Tori and Kara beefing. She does because that concludes the free preview of the Zach Nichols podcast. So go to Patreon and subscribe to see the rest of the shit that we talk. Go do it now.